Hey everyone, TN Outdoors 9. Those opening shots were with the 12 gauge Mossberg 590A1 special purpose 20 inch barrel as a typical cylinder bore choke and I was using the number four shot, not to be confused with number four buck shot, but the two and three quarter inch shell, you can see the velocity, it's one and one quarter ounces of payload. And here is the payload, approximately 125 to 130 pellets. And if you convert that number four over to a caliber, it's coming in just over 13. So get that in the reflection. 13 caliber. And if you move up to number four buckshot, you're looking at approximately 27 pellets and roughly 24 caliber. So smaller payload as far as number of pellets, but a lot bigger. And that's probably used more for home defense than this would be. This is typically a field load used for small game, birds and so forth. I've had to use this in the backyard unfortunately for rabies or rabid animals. We have a run of rabid raccoons and skunks and they'll come out in the middle of the day. They are obviously sick. They'll try to get into the house and the garage and they're somewhat aggressive. So I've had to use this to humanely put them down from a distance and I found it to be quite effective. Now, we're looking at this today because some folks might want to consider something smaller or not as powerful as buckshot for home defense because of fear of over penetrating walls and so forth. So this is what it does at roughly 10 feet on a one gallon water jug to be expected. You have a lot of energy going out there. This is from uh, three to five feet. So it opened that up. Now, if you're being attacked by a highly caffeinated Mr. Coffee Maker, then I think you're going to be in good shape. It pretty much split this in half. Let's move over to the steel and see what kind of pattern we had at distance. This plate is 12 inches in diameter, AR500 steel, 3 eighths of an inch thick, and it weighs about 12 pounds. That shot was from 30 feet. Really good coverage at that distance. Missed my foot. A couple of IPSC targets. Hits on the side. This is 24 inches by 18 inches. You can see the coverage there. And on the second one, more center mass on that. And I backed up on these, by the way. This was at approximately 15 yards, 45 feet. And pretty good coverage on this size target at that distance. And this is what you wanted to see, a block of the SIM test, calibrated to match the specs of 10% ordnance gel. Weighs 50 pounds, 22 inches in length. I have not been using denim for shotgun test, so it is absent again today. I'll be shooting this from a distance of 10 feet, and I'm hoping to get at least 10 to 12 inches of penetration out of a majority of the payload. As a point of reference, I was holding on the center of the block where that fluorescent meets the black on the front post. Let's back up and take a quick look at the front because it did go a little bit low. There might be a few pellets that tried to exit out of the bottom of the block, but that is a very nasty point of entry from 10 feet. For now, I've just split this into two halves. You can see on this half, the plastic wad penetrated about four inches. I don't know how realistic that's going to be in real life and to what extent that plastic wad caused this inch and a half diameter opening we have here and even more so over here. I do think that the pellets obviously caused a lot of a lot of damage to this. Speaking of pellets, I'm seeing most of these from this perspective in the six to eight and eight and a quarter inch range. I can see several through here in this area. I can feel them underneath and see them underneath the top layer of the block but generally six up to about eight and a quarter inches from this perspective. What I'm gonna do now is just make a cut right down the middle of this and see if I can get some more pellets in this area and if we can pick up some deeper penetration and then we'll wrap it up. Working along the core of the shot path, I made some additional cuts, including some cross sections and confirmed that the maximum penetration on this is going to be around eight to eight and a quarter inches with the majority of the shot stopping between five and a half and eight inches. I think that's a good thing as far as the pattern itself. Now this is all cut to pieces of course, but the frontal area of the block was originally around 48 square inches and at 10 feet, I think we captured a high percentage of the payload in that area. That will be confirmed once I break this block down into smaller pieces, melt it, and then pour the hot liquid through the strainer where it will be recast. In this case, for retirement. This is the last time you're going to see this particular block. I've been using it since February 
2011, have a fresh batch of sim test in the house. It's going to be lighter in color as we get started, but it's calibrated, so don't panic. Now, with regard to this particular test, if you can go with buckshot, if you can handle the recoil, and if your living situation permits that, I would gravitate toward the buckshot. However, if you are extremely concerned about overpenetration, I do think this is a better option than birdshot, and therefore it could be a good choice for you. Not the best, but it could be effective. Thanks for watching.